Hello and welcome to the Apache Pino Meetup. I'm Matt Landers, head of developer relations at StarTree. And today we have a special, special guest, uh, Srini Karamati. He's going to come on and talk about Apache Superset and forecasting and visualization within Pino. So I'm excited to bring him on. Let's do it. Hey, Srini, how you hey. doing? Good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Pretty good. Yeah, we're excited to have you on and see about visualization. I think this is uh, different than some of our other talks. We actually get to to see things, not just yeah. imagine them. <laughs> right, 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 for sure. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and let you uh, go at it, so. Great. Hey, everyone, can, I, can, you, can you guys see my screen? Yes, no, good, okay, oh, I think it's working. Awesome, uh, well, thanks everyone for coming. Uh, happy Tuesday, um, and yeah, I'm excited to talk about Pino, superset, time series stuff, uh, some forecasting, visualization. Uh, I'm a huge Viz geek myself, and so this was kind of a fun, fun talk to put together. Um, I will say I'm new to the Pino community and just the Pino project in general. Um, I didn't even have Java installed on my computer until a few days ago, so um, that's kind of a full disclosure, but uh, it's been fun. So. We'll get started. So I'll start by talking a little bit about my own background. So I live in Bo I live in Boston. Uh, my wife and I have been here for three years, uh, but I've been working remotely for about five or six years. So uh, the pandemic was interesting to see everyone else come up to my world, basically. Uh, my background is in data science. Uh, so I spent five years building DataQuest, an online learning platform for data science. Uh, maybe some people have, have heard of it. And currently, I, I got really excited, actually, to work on data tools themselves, because I thought, well, pow you know, it's powerful to teach people the existing tools. I think it's, uh, I wanted to take things to the next level and see if I could help make tools more accessible uh, for more people. So I decided to join Preset and uh, also along the way became a committer to the Superset project. And that's been, that's been super fun. It's kind of the first open source community that I've been really deeply embedded in. And uh, it's been a fun kind of learning process. Uh, the last about a year and a half. So, um, so quick intro for people who are new. So, Superset is a modern open source BI platform. Uh, by modern, we mean it's built on modern technologies uh, like Python and use React and TypeScript on the front end, and even for the back end in Python, we're adding a lot more type hinting and, and stuff like that. But it's built for the web, which you know I think for a lot of the rest of the data stack, does, it's not that surprising, but for some reason, the BI space, that's actually a relatively new idea. Uh, Web-based BI tools and Viz tools are really kind of only five or 10 years old. And uh, before that, you were kind of running you know, servers and Windows servers and doing all types of heavy GUI stuff natively. So modern open source BI platform uh, works with pretty much any SQL speaking engine. So there's over 50 that we kind of support. Uh, this is all because of SQL Alchemy, which is kind of the main platform that Superset utilizes to quickly kind of, uh, you know, support a ton of different databases. Um, and this screenshot's actually from one of our websites. Uh, the Pino logo is not right now, so I kind of snuck it in here to the top. However, we are redesigning our website, so I'm hoping in the com next com coming weeks uh, we'll have the, the Pino logo um, front, front and center. So, uh, and then large diversity of charts. So we got over 40 charts uh, in the project that Superset ships with. And you can actually extend and customize your own uh, Viz plugins. And in fact, that's actually one of the main uh, rising trends in our open source community is that people are building entire new products and are really kind of using Superset as a data platform almost instead of just kind of a BI layer, uh, which is pretty interesting. So uh, Superset was originally created because of Max's kind of frustrations uh, with Tableau. And uh, not to dump on them too much, I'm, I'm actually a big fan of the tool. And I think a lot of people learned Viz that way, uh, but it really didn't support at that time what they were interested in supporting at Airbnb, which was Druid and Presto, and just kind of the rest of these modern new data engineering um, tool sets. And obviously Pinos is right there. And there was just a lot of limitations. There's a Windows centric approach. And if you want to scale up your BI tool to thousands of, of licenses uh, every tool um was using per kind of really expensive per user licensing so this is just like paying 50 to 100 dollars a user a month for your entire organization is um really really cost prohibitive 
Um, and actually, Max is, is super passionate about this and wrote a blog post called The Future of BI is Open Source, uh, which I encourage you to check out if you're interested in learning more about the story. And so he created Apache Airflow and Superset around the same time, and both have since gone through the Apache Foundation and graduated. Uh, and I heard Pino just did as well, so congrats, congrats on that. Um, but that's kind of the, the roots. Uh, and that you'll see is going to inform a lot of the decisions and the types of customizations you can do in Superset, which is to say that it's insanely extensible. There's an API. There's, you know, obviously it's completely open source. So uh, super kind of hackable and, and pluggable, which is um, kind of the main antidote, I would say, to, to closed source stuff. So in Superset, um, one thing that's a little bit unique is there are two main workflows. So there's Explore, which is the no-code chart builder experience. Uh, this is a workflow that where Superset's backend actually generates the SQL queries on a user's behalf. And I'll showcase both these workflows uh, shortly. And uh, this is also enabled by SQL Alchemy. Basically, the GUI part of Explore maps really cleanly to SQL Alchemy's kind of uh, operators and this is what kind of lets, lets Superset have this great uh, no-code experience. And this is especially great. We have these like target personas. This is kind of work done by Cartel, which is a design firm, design and research firm. And so we have this, what we call explorer persona. We have a consumer persona. So these are personas that you know, they expect the data to be kind of mostly in the right shape, either in a physical table or in a virtual table in the Superset semantic layer. And most of the data munching has been done by someone else. And on the right side, you have SQL Lab, which is the SQL IDE. It's a browser-based ID, which I'll show very soon. And here, the user generates the SQL query. So the query here is mostly untouched by the backend, which means uh, you can go pretty crazy with it. You can enable DML on your on your any database you, you add to your superset instance and run any type of query that, as long as your database uh, will support it, um, it will work, and Superset will show you the results if there are any. So it's a pretty powerful kind of feature. Don't I generally don't recommend using kind of DML in in your BI layer, but um, it is kind of something that you can do. And this really caters to data engineers, data scientists, and and some of kind of what we call the explorer persona. And so this is kind of the common workflow that people have is they switch between uh, trying to uh, create a chart, potentially run into limitations because they need to bring in extra columns or bring in extra context from other tables. They hop over to SQL Lab, uh, prep the data, do joins, do whatever they need to do. And then uh, they're kind of ready to prep the data for visualization. So that's kind of to set the stage on, on how people use Superset and the common workflows. So next I'll talk about uh, time series. So this is kind of, so Superset was originally created to support these real time use cases, right? So a lot of like, you know, Druid came out of that uh, as well. And I know Pino, that was a big focus as well. It's this really focused, the sharp focus on real time use cases. And one of the things about real time is obviously the time series part. Now we've actually written about this, like, you know, we do talk extensively about how real time and time series don't exactly mean the same thing, but uh, we generally are interested in visualizing some process in time. And so the first thing you need here is a bunch of visualizations that actually support that. So over half the visualizations in Superset have a time component. Uh, these are the most common ones, and these are the kind of the most common ones moving forward that will be supported. And so we have things like area charts, bar charts, scatter plots, step charts, bubble. You can also mix charts, which is pretty interesting. So you can have this type of chart here on the right side where you have uh, a kind of bar plot on the bottom and then a time series line chart above. Uh, and then we also have things like a big number with a trend line. And so these are kind of the most commonly used ones. And this is the ones that you expect really your BI tool to have. Uh, and before I showcase some of these, I do want to kind of quickly talk about the technology. So in the past, Superset used NVD3, which is a layer on top of D3. And this essentially took some of D3's viz and data uh, data state management capabilities and added things like callbacks and other things that a BI tool really likes to have. Uh, but since then, it's been a few years since that project has really seen a lot of changes or, or momentum. And so the community is actually switching to eCharts, which recently became a top level project a few, few months ago, around the same time that Superset did. And if you go to their page, uh, eCharts.apache.org, you'll see 
thousands of just beautiful examples just like this. Uh, and it's a declarative viz library as well, which also has some niceties for a BI tool. And we've written on our preset blog about uh, why why the community is moving to eCharts. So enough kind of talking for now. I'd love to kind of get our hands a little bit dirtier and show off uh, how exactly some of this stuff works. So I want to start by first talking a little bit about my setup. So I have here, um, I'm running everything locally uh, just because it's easier to debug and a little bit faster. And this here I have in this tab, superset. So I'm running superset locally. Hey, real real in, quick, we can only see yeah. your uh, slide. Right oh, now. that's right. <laughs> Let me share my, I keep forgetting. Uh, thanks. Good, good call. Okay, share entire screen. Um, it should, I think the text will be a little bit smaller, but hopefully, hopefully everyone can see this. So, uh, cool. And uh, yeah, so as I was saying, so I'm running superset natively. So this is up here, you have the Python backend server. So superset's built on Flask App Builder, which is originally written by Daniel Gaspar, who also works at Preset now. And it basically lets you take Flask and um, kind of get a lot of the niceties that you would in an app. Does a lot of routing and authentication. And, and actually this is what allowed us to build an API very, very quickly without doing much, much more. And on the bottom, you have um, Node basically serving the React we, app. Uh, sorry, can we zoom in just a little bit? Yeah. We can't see. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah that's right. your your res resolution is pretty high there. Yeah, that's why I usually <laughs> share my window, right? Um, a little bit but more. Okay. Keep going. Um, Keep going. Uh, Still can't see. <laughs> that's okay. I'm actually not showing anything to be honest. Okay. Super interesting just here. Uh, right. Just kind of showing like, hey, like this is real and it's running. Uh, so okay. this is super yeah. set running on my computer, and then real quick, I'll show you, show everyone here, uh, Pino running. So this is in Kenny's uh, Docker image uh, that he put together. So big, big shout out to Kenny. Uh, he made this. Uh, so the backstory here is nine months ago we had talked about a collaboration because he'd written a great blog post on climate events analysis on Medium using Pino and Superset. Uh, and now I kind of finally have a finally was able to dive deep. So I was able to reuse his Docker image, and uh, this is this was great. I just removed some of the superset specific stuff. So it just did Zookeeper and the Pino controller and broker, and it also makes it easy because, as I mentioned, even as of last week, uh, I didn't have Java installed. So it's nice to just have everything run run within Docker. So this is running within Docker, and basically what it does is. It, it does everything that I just mentioned, and it pulled in all the data from the NOAA that was interesting and inserted it into, into Pino. So that's kind of it from, uh, from the setup side. And uh, here it is running, just, you know, just so you can see it. And we have baseball stats, we have storm events. So this is the kind of data on, on climate uh, storm events that we're kind of interested in, in visualizing. So here in a superset, it was pretty easy to add. Uh, both the Pino and Superset communities have pretty good documentation here. And so here we have uh, uh, a really simple, you just need to form the SQL Alchemy string. And this is well documented in the Pino docs. So big shout out to the community there for, for doing a great job here. Um, it basically just worked. And uh, that's that. So this is the kind of data. So this is storm events um, and if you want to see how much data there is, it's a few million events, I believe. So pretty impressive that it's nicely working on my my local computer, and uh, I don't hear my fans turning on, so that's pretty good. Um, and real quick, if you uh, want to understand, quick, it, it's still pretty small. Can you make okay. the oh, here? What I'll now. do is I'll actually switch back to window now that I just need the browser. So all right, yeah, that help. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I should probably just not show my terminal in the future. Okay. Uh, cool. So anyway, uh, here we have, uh, I just did a quick group by just to see, uh, what are all the, what are all the events, uh, that, that actually happened. Uh, you can quickly sort by count. This will just basically sort on the front end, uh, not in the query itself. So it has data on thunderstorm winds, hail, flash floods, um, et cetera. So that's, that's pretty neat. And, uh, what we can do is actually. Uh, so this is a um, so this is actually querying the raw data directly. So let me actually start from the beginning, just so people have an understanding of what the workflow is like. So we go to this charts tab here. Uh, we can add a chart, 
And then from here, so this is kind of a, a preview of a new Viz picker. This is not actually in a version released yet. This is on master, but in the coming weeks, this will be in Superset 1.3. 1, 1 um, but here we can find, uh, was it storm events? So storm events are storm events. And here you can actually pick um, the chart that you want. And you can go from here. So here is Explorer. This is kind of what I was talking about earlier. So this is kind of the no code interface. So by default, it doesn't try to do a ton, but we can set the time range. So this was something that's been added in the last few months, a very, uh, I would say, pretty epic. Um, is it here? Yeah, so here. Hey, Shani, real can quick. You, Sorry, can you make yep. your window a little smaller? It's still really hard yes. to see. Or still really hard to see? Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, how's this? Like, is this better? Has, yeah, and more. It's really uh, tiny for the viewers. OK, I got it. Uh, Maybe is this okay? Can, like, better. Zoom in or something. Sure. That's getting better. There we go. Okay. Let me change All my right. resolution. Um, yeah, that's good. This uh, okay. Hopefully, this is better now. Great. Um, cool. Thank. Thanks for that. So here we can. This is Explore. So we can basically. Um, without having to write any code or anything like that, as long as your data is kind of most in the right shape, um, you can use this to slice and dice and explore the data. So let's go to, I um, believe there is a advanced one. So this is cool. This will actually take, you can do like last 10 years, for example, and it will parse it out. Um, and then we'll just, let's just count the events themselves. So this is just every single storm event in this, in this data set. Um, and then we can run query. And so pretty messy, but you can kind of get a sense for um, just the total brute counts, basically. And then from here, you can you can go pretty crazy and uh, filter it down. So let's say we want to look at just the hail events. We go here. We do filter. We do event type equals hail. So this will filter it down. Wow, Pinot is fast. Was, you know, these are these are some fast updating. So, uh, great job, y'all. And so this is the last uh, ten years of storm events data from NOAA, and this data ends at around April 2021. And uh, and that's I'm just saying that because in in a few minutes I'll show how forecasting works uh, using this chart type. So here's and so this is basically the main way that people do time series stuff. This is an interesting chart. So this is actually the e, this is the new e charts time series chart that's in the superset project right now. If you want to switch between chart types, it's in the customize tab. So you have line. You can do scatter. Uh, I don't recommend scatter for this many points, but uh, you can do it. You can do bars as well, and you can also change the time grain. So daily is pretty aggressive for a ten year period. You might want to do something like months instead. Um, so this is kind of nice, right? And you can also do step charts. Uh, don't make a ton of sense for this specific uh, chart, uh, this specific data set. Um, so from here, what we can do is actually forecast stuff. And so the way this works in Superset is it's built on top of Facebook's profit library. Um, currently, it's 1.01, I believe. It's just a univariate regression model. And it does things like seasonality. So Let's switch back to the line plot. Let's do, for, for forecasting, we do want to be a little bit more granular. So let's go back to week. And then from here, uh, we can go down to predictive analytics. So currently, this is not supported in all chart types. Uh, the community is hoping to change that in the coming months. It'd be, it would be nice if it was supported in more of the chart types I showcased earlier. Um, but for now, this is the heavy duty uh, time series visualization that most people use just because it's so uh, customizable. And so from here, you can actually enable a forecast. And then by default, it has some parameters set up. Uh, we usually, you know, 80% is quite, quite a wide conference interval. So if you can set it to something a little bit more aggressive. And from here, it really tries to do a best guess using the past data. But we can actually give the model a little bit more. So if we know for a fact that some of the patterns are weekly, yearly, daily, seasonality built in, uh, we can explicitly inform uh, the profit library of that. So let's say there's there's a little bit of kind of yearly seasonality. 
you know, these these type of storm events don't really uh, bucket into weekly and daily uh, so much. Uh, those are kind of better when you have like a, an engagement metric that you're looking day over day or week over week. And so from here, uh, we can also set the forecast period. So for now, this goes to around April 2021, I think April 4th. And the way this works is it uses the period specified here. So this is the time grain we've set to weeks. So if we do 10 as the forecast period, it will predict 10 weeks into the future. So let's see what that looks like. So on query. Um, so basically, Superset is intercepting the data that's being sent. Um, and so the query, the first Pino is queried. The results are come into Superset and cached um, in your cluster, in your Superset instance, and then uh, the profit library is run. So in Superset, there's this kind of slowly emerging layer of post query hooks. So these are kind of extra computation that you can do. And this is nice for things like uh, when you want to be in a little bit more like Python land instead of SQL land, uh, you know, doing predictive analytics in just SQL is, uh, is possible, but it can be a little bit painful um, for a variety of reasons. So sometimes you just want to bust out Python or another programming language. Uh, Supersets written in Python, so that's kind of the natural plug into the rest of the Python ecosystem is, is really natural here. And you can imagine other types of uh, Python libraries as well that you can use. Um, under the hood, Supersets already using pandas a bunch. So um, there's a lot more that, that you can um, start to enable. So this is kind of a prototype uh, from a few months ago. Uh, and so profit is the first thing that that's uh, working in this new functionality. So here you'll see 10 periods, 10 weeks into the future from April 2021. Uh, we actually get to, uh, what's the sixth month in the year? June. Uh, we can actually get to June. And it also shows things, um, it, it, it tries to visualize actually the confidence interval. So how confident, what are the kind of 95% um, to some degree the confidence that it has in its predictions based on the based on the past data. So this is kind of well within that 95% range um, that it has. So. Um, yeah, that's kind of uh, this is one of the cool things about forecasting. So normally, you know, what a lot of organizations I've seen do, and this is what we did at my last company, is try to have a separate kind of process for stuff like forecasting. So you might do something in Spark or in uh, in the kind of your Python data stack and have that work kind of somewhat parallel to your analytics and and database stack. Uh, but there's kind of value, especially for end users that don't, you can imagine kind of a store manager or someone in sales or marketing that um, is probably not going to kind of integrate with the data science organization and learn a bunch of Python uh, and, and et cetera. So being able to do some of the basics here, just get basic predictions uh, right here in the UI is, is super powerful. So I'll talk a little bit about how this, this actually works. So as I mentioned, this uses Facebook's profit library. This is an additive regression model. Uh, this, this blurb is a few months old, and this is because uh, since then, the Facebook is actually uh, the developer community that has added neural profit. So this uses a neural network, a relatively simple neural network to also let you do um, add certain types of holidays, and, um, and it just tries to do a better job of fitting, fitting to past data. Uh, but the main kind of design goals for profit were how do we do simple forecasting, but have the levers be easily understandable by non kind of non data geeks um, like myself. So that kind of seasonality, those seasonality parameters are kind of one of the ways that um, profit uh, you know accomplishes that. And so if for people who are interested in trying profit uh, in the superset context, if you're using Docker, you can add it to your requirements-local.txt. Uh, so this is kind of loaded in. So I use Docker Compose a lot locally um, for to run Superset and try things out. So you, you just need to basically edit this file on your computer before you do Docker Compose up. And then along the way, the library, library will get installed. You can also use pip. And so I'm using pip today uh, to install this because I'm running Superset in editable mode so that I can quickly kind of test uh, small changes and test the source code basically uh, directly. And uh, so it's installed using the profit add-ons that's specified in the superset. So we've written two blog posts about this. Uh, these are focused on Druid, uh, which maybe I shouldn't mention in a Pinot meetup, but 
the superset layer, you know, it's the whole goal of superset is to is to treat kind of every database somewhat interchangeably. That's why we have this bet on SQL outcome. And that's why we have explore. We want uh, end users to not have to intimately know for most use cases, what are the specifics of each database in an organization, because nowadays, you know, as you're probably aware, a lot of organizations have, you know, 10, 20, 30 different databases, depending on their goals. So, uh, and I will follow up next week with a blog post on Pino and um, and Superset and some of this forecasting stuff, if people are interested. Um, so other things, so before I go here, I do want to showcase a, a few more things real quick. So some of the other chart types, so one fun thing I always, um, I spend some time doing is looking at the area chart. So this is a really fun one where if you want to look at um, some specific events and how those have changed over time um, as a proportion of the total events. So here, what we can do actually is, so you'll notice here, there's actually no forecasting um, because this this area chart does not, it's not do forecasting. It's actually trying to visualize groups as a proportion. And so we can keep doing the last 10 years. Uh, instead of event type just equals hail, uh, we can add a few. And you'll see here it automatically changed into this um, button style instead. So let's also add flash flood. Um, and in the future, we're hoping you can actually uh, enable pre-filtering here. So it'll pre-populate a list of things. Uh, and then let's also add like winter storm, for example. Those are three, we'll hit save, we'll hit run. And right now it's just doing a count. Uh, but what we need to do here is do a group by. Now we can actually see the proportion of these events as they've changed over time. Um, and we can zoom in even more so we can even go to geography. It's probably not liking the number of events that I'm asking it to visualize. Let's see if it if it holds through. Um, this may actually, yeah, let's see, may actually not be happy about this. So let me come back here. Okay. So let's instead try that again, but instead just do group by event. Let's just do the top, um, maybe just the top five. We'll filter the data down. Let's just do the last, uh, Let's do the last year and then we'll do event type. All right, this should be, this should work out better. Okay, here we go. So this is, you can see that, so these type, the area chart is really nice for visualizing groups and, and cohorts. You can also increase this as well. If you wanna see 10, uh, you can stack it up if you'd like. So this is using stacked, uh, but you can also turn it into, you know, there's a lot of different types of customization you can do here. A stream is one of my favorite ones as well. Um, it's a little bit chaotic. And the reason is we're doing probably too much of a fine time grain. And so this is a little bit smoother. Um, and so I think this is really the power of being able to use, I would say both Pinot and Superset together is I'm just having ideas and trying them out. Um, and it's relatively low, low consequence. Um, so let's do advanced. Let's try a slightly more. To run query, you get the picture. So, uh, and actually, if you load up Superset, I have a nice default chart that visualizes video game console sales over time that uses this very similar style. So the only change I had to do with the metadata itself, which I'll showcase here. So this is a kind of interesting part of Superset. This is kind of the thin semantic layer that we have. So you can pre-specify metrics. Uh, so if you wanted to, for example, there are columns here for start and end daytime. If you wanted to compute uh, the length that, of each event, there's a hailstorm that started at this time and ended this time. Let's actually specify the number of seconds or minutes. Um, you could use a metric or a cal calculated column to do exactly that and specify an arbitrary SQL expression. And then Superset will treat it as kind of a first class citizen. Um, you can see every column. And the only thing I had to do was to add uh, a timestamp, daytime format. Out of the box, Superset tries to infer the daytime format if you click is temporal, but doesn't always get it right. Um, so if you use the ISO 8601 standard, you can put in that string. Um, and this this form should look a little bit familiar. This is actually pandas under the hood. 
Um, and so this will be very similar to kind of a pandas uh, read CSV call uh, call where you can put in the daytime format in that format. So that's kind of some of the secret sauce there. And then once I did this, immediately all of the all of this time grains, time column, time ranges, all that functionality got unlocked just by specifying the right um, kind of time time format there. So other features uh, that is core to superset. Um, one is chart annotation. So I wrote a blog post about this, how Superset supports real-time analytics. So it kind of goes over a bunch of different features uh, that, that target these. So um, so I talked about the chart types. We have chart annotations. So if you are tracking um, some you know, sales, you know, product sales or something like that, and you wanted to actually augment that data um, with things like, oh, we ran this new coupon, we ran this new promotion, you want that available, then that's a powerful way to do that. Slack and email alerts. So if you're, I mean, you can even imagine monitoring some of your data stack this way, which we've seen some people do uh, or seen some people manage their AWS spend, if you can believe it. They basically will set up an alert um, so that they get notified when their spend uh, for a specific Amazon account that they're running crosses a threshold. And you can set that up in Slack or an email. And then, of course, we talked about time series forecasting as well. Um, the last thing that I mentioned uh, earlier is neural profits. So this will use a slightly newer neural network. So this is a neural network architecture uh, that Facebook created in-house specifically to do things like supporting recurring events. So something that may not be seasonal or weekly, but it could be, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, right? So it's every it's recurring, but it doesn't necessarily fall on the same time period. So last thing I wanted to mention a few callouts. So uh, you know, join us. Superset is open source. So is Pina. We're both both Apache projects. There's a bunch of stuff I would love to see added, and uh, I'd love to collaborate with with people here who are interested. So adding some more nice end user features like CSV upload uh, currently doesn't really work, um, and part of it is because Superset uses SQL Alchemy for everything. Things that are a little bit more database specific need kind of more custom logic. So just doing an insert kind of a bulk insert uh, may not necessarily be the best strategy here. Uh, better error messages. And so a lot of the error messages that come out, we just kind of bow out and we say, oh, we have the SQL Alchemy error, good luck, right? So there's more we can do to make sure the Pinot and Superset experience in particular is better. Pinot specific linting. So in SQL Lab right now, the IDE, there isn't a lot of database specific linting. So it'd be cool if uh, you could actually have certain functions uh, be pre, uh, you know, show up in the autocomplete. Um, and then in Superset, in addition to uh, SQL Alchemy, there's a database engine spec. And so Pino has one, Postgres, every single database Superset supports has one to support Superset specific stuff that SQL Alchemy may not care all that much about. So the time grains, I know Kenny a few months ago added a specific way to convert uh, one of the time grains, I forgot which one, in Pinot. And um, that's handled nicely because of that DB engine spec. Join the contributing channel. Uh, I'm, I'm super active in our Slack, and you can ping me there as well. Also in the Pinot Slack. So if there are specific issues you have, I can try to advocate for them. Um, and, or if it's something small, I can even try to fix it. Uh, last thing I wanted to mention, preset. So we offer a cloud-hosted version. We've been in beta for seven months or so, and now we're about to go GA in a few weeks. So super exciting. Um, and we're hiring in a bunch of different departments, uh, which my recruiting, I feel obligated to my recruiting team, definitely mention that. Um, and on my team, we're actually hiring another developer relations engineer. So another awesome person like Matt, although I just met Matt, but he seems pretty awesome. So I'm hoping, hoping we, can, we can have someone like that as well at preset. So. Please reach out if that sounds vaguely interesting. And last part, shout outs. So Kenny in particular, uh, you know, saved, saved a lot of time. I was able to, instead of spending a few weeks really having to learn a ton of things from scratch, a lot of the work he'd already done made it uh, much, much quicker. Uh, Corinne for just helping organize this event uh, and being patient with me as I ask questions. And uh, Matt, who I, you know, got the, got the fortune to know just now and is kind of hosting me today, as well as just a broader community. So the Superset community, Avila in particular, one of our PMC members, did most of the forecasting and profit integration. 
uh, the Pinot community, uh, Apache eCharts uh, for supporting and having all these awesome viz types. And I'm not intimately familiar with the maintainers of the Pinot DB driver. I'm sure some people here in the audience, uh, but this is also awesome because uh, this is what enables Pinot and Superset to talk together. Um, so thanks for having me. Uh, that's that's all I got. Happy to take any questions. All right. Thanks, Rainy. That was great. We do have a few questions that were asked during the chat, and I have some myself. But the, the first one that is pretty easy, I think, is can we leverage this with preset? And since you're from preset, I'm guessing the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, the answer is yes. Uh, yeah, it works. It works in preset, um, and it works exactly like just how I showed it. So for people who are maybe wondering, there's from a product standpoint, there's really not much difference between preset and superset. So everything that works in superset will you know, work magically in, in preset. Um, and we've even recently added the API and, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, it works right out of the box uh, and it works great. Great. Uh, another question that was asked there is, are there any pitfalls or disadvantages to using superset? Uh, I don't know exactly what that's referring to, maybe against other tools like Tableau. Um, yeah, there's no pitfalls. Uh, the product is perfect. <laughs> um, I think we can go on Thanks. to the next question. <laughs> so uh, pitfalls, yeah, that's a great. There's there's a there's a few. So one, I'll say, as someone who's used, uh, so my background's data science, so I've used pretty much every BI tool under the sun. And uh, one of the pitfalls for sure is getting too crazy with your semantic layer and having that live, having a very very thick semantic layer uh, live in your BI tool uh, and not ha properly managing that uh, can be problematic. So. There's one thing, Looker, you know, when people people loved Looker, they liked the, the you know, LookML and modeling things in it. But then they were like, okay, we want to leave the tool, but I have like thousands of kind of modeling queries and stuff locked in my Looker account, right? So um, that's something that was kind of a problem. And I think in general, one of the reasons you're seeing the rise of DBT and, and uh, Transform and some of these other companies that are trying to decouple these things, I think that's essentially what's happening in the entire data space is things are becoming, things that were once highly vertically integrated, like your BI tool are now kind of breaking up into components so you can swap out, um, excuse me, certain parts uh, depending on kind of what you need, right? So I think uh, that's one risk in using a tool like Superset that has a nice semantic layer is uh, end users feel empowered, but then they also may want to create tons of custom metrics and do crazy eight-way table joins and just have all that logic live in the BI layer. And that's that's kind of a, a data governance problem. So that's that's definitely one thing that's both kind of unlocks and unblocks end users, but also can create to a kind of ecological uh, management disaster. So that's definitely one. Two, I will say is that there's still some rough edges around the user experience. It is an open source project and open source traditionally has not been known for putting out kind of Apple-esque, you know, polished, well-designed stuff. And so even the last year, the project has gone through a ton of design and usability revamp. Uh, just last week, we changed the order of the tabs, which is a very controversial decision. Um, and so there, I think on the usability side, if you, if you aren't kind of at least somewhat familiar with databases and SQL, the tool is still, you know, does require a little bit of hand-holding to you. So those are the main ones. Um, the last thing is I would say just there's, we still have missing features, right? So I'm a big notebooks notebooks guy myself. Uh, I love Python notebooks and that whole ecosystem. And currently Superset doesn't have any way to, uh, there's no way to, to do notebook stuff in, in Superset. Um, so those are some of them, yeah. All right. Uh, another question was, can you add a custom tooltip to a chart? So can you define a tooltip? That's a great question. I think right now, there's not really a way to add a custom tooltip. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think the main kind of hacking that people do here is, so there is a markdown element that you can add in your dashboard. And so it's not it's not quite the same as, as having a tooltip right in your chart or having a dynamic tooltip even, uh, but you can do, you can add little annotations and provide more context that maybe you would want to do with a tooltip you can just do that with the markdown cell instead, which is almost treated like a chart type. And so 
Uh, I, for example, in the, one of the default uh, dashboards, I created this one. We have a Slack dashboard from our Superset Slack community. The data from that community is visualized, and we have the Slack logo in the top left corner, and that's pulling from Slack CDN. It's just pulling that image in and rendering it. So uh, you can put arbitrary markdown in, in HTML. So that's kind of one of the, the hacks, I would say. Um, but to answer your question, like there's not tool tips at the moment. All right. Uh, last question that I see on here is, does Superset integrate with Presto to perform joins on Pino? And you may not know the answer to this one, but. Yeah, so it's funny you ask because me and Brian <laughs> Olson from the Trino community, we did a Pino and Mongo event just a few, uh, two or three months ago. I don't know, this whole year has been uh, hard to keep track of. But a few months ago, we did a Pino and Mongo event where we took data from Pino. Uh, I think it was one was COVID vaccinations or cases, and one was flight data. And then we joined them um, using Trino, Trino, Presto, you know, whatever, right? S similar, similar idea. So, uh, yeah, so it does support that. It works really, really well. So a lot of the, as I mentioned, right, Max came from Airbnb. They use Presto heavily there. Uh, we also have Beto from Lyft. He has a ton of Presto experience, and he works at Preset. So we have pretty good integration with Trino and Presto. Apache Drill as well, which is a little bit less well-known, but you can even use Apache Drill to do things like query APIs using SQL, which is like kind of crazy if you think about it. And they also support joins. So people usually use uh, SQL Lab for that. There's not really a great way to use it in Explore right now. The common workflow is people do the queries that they want in SQL Lab, and then when it's ready to go, they publish it as a virtual data set. And then, excuse me, then you can go to Explore and uh, make charts out of that. Cool. I have a question. Uh, so let's say that I go and I design this chart. Is there a way for me to get that to my users outside of the tool itself? Yeah, so great question. Um, so there is uh, people, we have a big kind of community of, of sub-community, maybe is a better word, of people using it in, this is called embedded, so in an embedded mm -hmm. way. And so every every uh, chart that you create, and I can actually quickly, I'll just screen share just so people can see it. So every chart that you create actually has a little URL. Uh, so if you go here, you get an embed code. And so this is an iframe. So currently I'll say most people use superset in this embedded way using iframe so they'll take this and then they'll uh they'll basically put it in their application or or, or whatever in superset you can create a public role and then just hide things and so this okay. i haven't tested this recently but this should work uh yeah so this is kind of a a quick demonstration of embedded right so right. again it's still hitting the authentication back end and and whatever but if you make a public role and uh, do a little bit of customization, then you can embed charts. Same thing with dashboards as well. Um, we're working on more documentation for embedded in particular uh, that should be out in the next three or four weeks. But uh, yeah, there's people, we've spoken to at least three or four companies that are actually building entire products uh, on, top of, on top of Superset in this very embedded way. So you can imagine a customer data portal where your POS company you want to let those people come in just and just play with you know their own data, right? Slice and dice their own small business data or or whatever. And so um, you can do it. I'll say it's not super uh, straightforward. It requires a little bit of work, um, but yeah, we've seen a lot of people yeah, that's on that. Cool. I like it. All right. Well, that's all the questions that we have in chat. So really appreciate you coming and showing this off today, Shrini. Uh, hopefully, we can have you again. Awesome. Thanks for having me. This was fun. All right, everybody. Go out there and build some cool visualizations with Pinot and Superset and happy coding. Thanks. Have a good Tuesday.